I hope you enjoy this free excerpt from Twist of Fate. It's a fun little short story set in my former hometown, Wellington, New Zealand, once named the coolest little capital in the world. I hope you enjoy some of the settings and meeting some of the characters. Twist of Fate, written and narrated by Molly Matthews. Chapter 1 how are you, mate? Mac asked Jonathan Janes as he pulled up to the curb outside Wellington's domestic airport. Jonathan gave Mac a weary smile as his best friend hopped out of his Land Rover. I've been better. That London flight was gruelling. That's not what I meant. I know. What can I say? Jacinda wanted out of the marriage, and nothing I said, nothing I tried. Nothing I promised her would change her mind. She always was a selfish cow, Max said. Jonathan glanced up at the grey broody sky. New Zealand's capital city, true to nature, had turned out a particularly bleak and desolate day. It's good to be back home. At least some things never changed. As he reached for the handle of his suitcase, a sudden gust of Wellington's infamous wind spun it around, sending it veering off the curb. What the hell? Mac exclaimed as the suitcase flew open, spilling the contents onto the road. Long blonde wigs, corsets, high-heeled stilettos, false eyelashes, makeup, and books spewed out of the case and lay in a tangled heap. A couple of kids rigged out in the latest wrapper clothing, bling swinging from their necks and black hoodies shielding their heads, raised their eyebrows and wolf whistled as they walked past. Jeez, Johnny, what's happened to you since you've been in London? Max said, picking up one of the books as Jonathan scrambled to gather the strange belongings. There can be no culture without the drag queen? Max said, reading out loud. Is there something you're not telling me? Is that why the cow threw you out? That's not my book, and that's not my suitcase. I may be open-minded, but I'm no queen. Mac ran his hand over his designer's stubble chin and looked dubiously at his best mate. Even though he hadn't seen Johnny for more than nine years, as far as he recalled, he didn't have a penchant for wearing woman's clothes. Whose case is it, then? I must have picked up the wrong bag, Jonathan cursed as he bent down and read the luggage tag. Danny Zalski? Who the hell's Danny Zalski? Mac asked. Damn, I betcha that guy's got my luggage. Jonathan said, sweeping his hand through his thick mop of black wavy hair. Danny sounds like an interesting character. What sort of dude gets around in this? Mac held up a pink silk bodice, black frilly lace, and a white satin ribbon. And in his other hand, he raised a pair of pink fishnets. Give me a kiss, sugar, he joked, putting on a blonde Dolly Parton-like wig. Idiot, Jonathan laughed, swiping Mac playfully. Somewhere, this guy Danny's got my stuff and I want it back. He grabbed his iPhone from his jacket pocket and punched in the number he found on the luggage tag. Hello, is this Danny Zowski? You're who? Danny's tied up, Jonathan quirked his thick brows. Kinky, he whispered as he winked at Mac. Look. There's been a mix-up. I have Danny's suitcase. Sure. I'll wait. Yeah. I'm Jonathan. You've got my bag? That's great. Look, can you tell me how to get to you? Yeah, yeah. We'll bring the bags over. Sure. No sweat. We can get there in time. What's going on? The good news is that Danny has my gear. Apparently he's in some sort of show in town. What kind of show? Mac asked suspiciously, holding a pair of crotchless knickers. Don't know, 
Jonathan said, bunching everything into the suitcase and hauling it into the back of the Range Rover. All I know is we've got to get this gear to him quick. Chapter 2 Do you want me to come with you for protection, just in case? Mac joked as they pulled up outside the back entrance of the St. James Theatre. This Danny guy, mm, he might fancy you. You are kind of cute, Johnny boy. Get out of here. This'll just take a minute. I'll give the stuff to Danny, get my bag, and get the hell out of there. Jonathan jumped out of the car and knocked on the giant worn door. A bulky guy dressed in a skin-tight pink t-shirt and green leggings that clung to his private bits in all the wrong ways stepped outside. I'm here to see Danny, Jonathan said. Is Danny expecting you? The bulky guy asked, folding his arms and frowning. Yep, he's got something for me. Is that right? he said, raising his eyebrows. Okay, pretty boy, in you go. Take the first right door, then left, and on your right again. Name's on the door. Jonathan stepped out of the sunlight and into a dark, narrow passage. He looked briefly down at the black suitcase. It looked the same, yet its contents were nothing like his own. He deliberately travelled light, leaving behind the memories of his married life in London, ready to start again. He bit back a curse as he rubbed his chest where everything felt tight. He was a fit powerhouse of strength, but it still hurt like the devil to have failed at marriage. He dragged the case along the dark corridors that wove through the old theatre and stopped in front of a door with a brass plate and a gold star beside it, which read Danny Zalski. Jonathan shifted uncomfortably as he waited for his knock to be answered. What do you want? purred a soft voice that oozed sensuality and femininity. D Danny? he asked tentatively. Y you're a she, he said, regretting the stupid comment as soon as the words slipped from his mouth as the woman behind the voice opened the door. Wow, Danny girl was a knockout. The silk fabric of her pink robe clung to her shapely body, accenting all her curves in exactly the right places. Bright pink platform shoes gave her small frame a flattering lift, adding length to her shapely legs and drawing his eyes toward her face. Her black eyes sparkled mischievously as though reveling in her shock. She had no makeup on, and in that moment Jonathan thought, she was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. Danny, with a Y. I thought girls spelled it with an I, he tried to explain. I like the Y, she said. Why, for why should I follow the crowd? Why, for why be dependent on others? Why, for why should I be like other women? And why, because why are you so damn cute? Really? Kind of, she said, blushing. My dad was hoping for a boy, and he spelled it that way. As she bent to check the label on her case, the robe fell open lightly, providing a glimpse of her creamy white cleavage. You're a lifesaver, she whispered in a sultry voice that ricocheted through his chest. She stood on her tiptoes, drawing herself up to meet his six-foot, three-inch frame, and kissed him. Jonathan almost fainted. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from Twist of Fate. If you did, please do like and subscribe to this channel for more free excerpts and pop along to my website mollymatthews.com and grab your free copy.